Welcome, and thank you for joining me for another whiskey review. Today, we're going to take a look at the Craig Allocky Exceptional Cast, 24-year-old. Dustin, this is, uh, I believe, the third Exceptional yep. Cast uh, we've done. All of them been excellent, as well as the uh, 23-year-old that we were able to bring the folks. So, Craig Allocky, um, very impressive distillery. Um, kind of a worm tub uh, distillation process yeah. that we always they're thought was cool. Killing it with these exceptional casks. And these exceptional casks. And cast, they're fair priced. Every time we get one of these, it, it's it's a good whiskey. So let me give the details on this. This one was uh, date filled in the barrel uh, back in 1995, 1025. I don't know what I was doing. I was in high school. Nice. Senior in high school. What are you, middle school? Elementary school? What no. year was that again? No one cares. All right. So it was Young. bottled in 2020. Dustin, which gives us an age of 24 years. This is cast number two, excuse me, 5229. Let's give you a quick close up of the bottle. Looks very much like all of the exceptional cast, Dustin. Same bottle, a lot of good detail on what it is. This obviously X Sherry cask, and it comes in at a cast strength of 52.2%. A little low for uh, some of these, but no, whatever. Well, I mean, it, you know, it's almost a quarter century old. I mean, that's not, you're right, it is it, it is probably a tad low, but I tell you what, anytime you're north of 50% ABV, you're in good, you're good shape. And you're north of 20 year old whiskey. Happy, you, happy times are coming, guys. Yeah, it's, it's usually a good experience. Now, I cannot remember. Us drinking, I'll give you the heavy pour. <laughs> I can't remember uh, drinking this one before, and I don't remember the difference between the 19, which I loved, and the 23-year-old, uh, but those were always good ones. But we'll get yeah, into I'll it. try to remember my notes, because I've uh, done all three of these side by side. That's probably worth our time to do one of these things. <clears throat> a couple of, couple of three Craig Alkey single casts. Let's, my let's... 23 has gotten low. We'll have, to, we'll have to do that sooner than later then. Yeah, let's get Mind you. This one's getting low. They're all good. They're up. so good. Yeah. If you guys uh, want to take a look at that, you know, let us know. Um, Dustin, how, bottle, the number of bottles here. This is about a 199 of 474. 474. And they're usually a little less than 500. Yeah, and that's, I mean, you got to think that's actually been probably a little bit of a loss. That's a sherry butt. And it's too many for a <clears throat> hogshead, so. Quarter century is a long time, but. <clears throat> yeah, because otherwise you're talking 500, 600 on some of those butts. So, yeah. Mm. That candied sulfur. When you say sulfur, most people are turned off. I'm getting, you know, believe it or not. Looking at you, Narby. I know you don't like that sulfur. <laughs> I am getting um, pineapple and oak. Yeah, there is, there is a fruity, fruity note to this. And then there's like a green leaf of some sort. <clears throat> yeah, I was going to say, you, you know, I usually have like a fruit bowl. You know, <clears throat> yeah, kind of yeah. saying I have apples and bananas and stuff like that. Like I'm getting all of that. I'm getting fresh apples, fresh bananas. It's a fruit basket. There's here. definitely sulfur and even like some smoke. Yeah, wood smoke for sure. Candied sulfur. It is. You're right. It's candied smoke and sulfur. <clears throat> but the smoke, the wood smoke, and the sulfur note kind of just intermingles really nice. This is a different sulfur note. This isn't like your this unpleasant sulfur. This doesn't have any of the egg notes that you often associate with sulfur. That's what I mean. at all. There's none of that. This is actually very. It's almost like it's a clean smoke with a, a little bit of just hint of maybe maybe a hint of. Plastic, maybe no, inside of a brass tube, almost. I can see some metallic uh, elements here, yeah. But it's very faint. It's almost just like one of the older art bags. You know, I get that metallic note. I can say like the twenty three or something like that. And it's got this it's just incredibly mm. citrusy note here. That's it's not a the fruit is not super distinct. I said pineapple earlier because mm -hmm. I think of pineapple as like something that I get citrus, but I don't get fruitiness from when I smell it. Sure, that makes sense. And so I'm just kind of getting that like. Ooh, now I'm getting a little bit of like uh, toasted marshmallow. Yeah, you're right. Heavy citrus. Oh, I just got a little bit of toasted marshmallow. That was that was interesting. Yeah, there's a graham cracker in here as well. Oh, yeah, there definitely is. Not, <clears throat> not any chocolate though, so we can't quite make s'mores out of this one. No. Some of the other ones had some nice chocolate notes. That, it, the 19 and 23, I think, both had some chocolate. This one, not getting any chocolate here. Well, not on the nose. We'll get to it all though. It's a puffy marshmallow. It's not even like sure. A, it's barely been toasted. It's almost like you're out, you know, camping. You ever a Cub Scout or Boy Scout? Yeah. You know, you take it on those camping trips and you you make, you know, well, you would make s'mores, but, you know, you do marshmallows and stuff like that. That very much reminds me of being on the campfire. Oh, yeah. Strong, like, a vanilla note, but a wood vanilla note, if you know what I mean by that. Like, when you hear, when you smell oh, yeah. wood burning. <clears throat> lovely, lovely stuff. Mm. This is probably one of the cleaner Craig Allocies I've had, but it's not clean, it's... Still Craig Allocky. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it, it's 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 distinct. Mm -hmm. One thing I don't come away from Mike is I don't 
I'm not thinking sherry casks. Right away. I, you know, I agree. I mean, we're talking citrus. We're talking some of those other things. We're not really picking up chocolate notes. At least on the nose, I'm not getting a ton of sherry either. And again, you've had this bottle open for a while. Yeah. I mean, what, six months? Three, four. Okay. I'm always off when it comes to time. Um, but you've worked the bottle now. So it's not like it hasn't Yeah, no. This us. one's definitely been one I... Uh, I, I spent a lot of time with this one because it was it was different when I first got to it. And it took me a few pours before I had think thought I understood it. And so I, I usually try to get the bottle to at least here on like the first sitting, you know, just get it right around the shoulder. And then I usually, you know, kind of hold off, mm-hmm. have a few sips every week until I get to like, you know, the top of the label. And that's when I'm like, all right, we can probably review this. You know, Craig Alkey's in general. But this general. one, I just kind of kept going. So I'm like, yeah, I don't know. It's, I got to unwind this one. Yeah, Craig Alkey's in general need some oxidation. Mm-hmm. They really do to kind of open up. They, they do come off a bit closed off initially. This one was definitely closed off at first. Uh, not unlike Cavalines. I mean, yeah. I mean, some of those are the same way. Like, we got some nice ones. Like, hey, when we open them up, like, okay, this is decent. But, you know, after four or five months of it Yeah, you get it down to, like, like, halfway. You're like, oh, my God. Like, this is, we need another bottle. And you're like, darn it, they were cheap then. We didn't know. <laughs> <laughs> that's, always, that's always the way you buy, too. <clears throat> All right, we're going to the Yeah. Of course, if you buy two of everything, you're going to have a lot of bottles to sell. Thinking of a certain guy who might do that fairly often. No names. <laughs> I always tell myself that. It never happens. All right. You'll be happy to know the chocolate note does come off on the finish. As soon as you swallow the chocolate notes there. Stinging. Sweetness. Citrus. A um, little bit of that brass metallic. Um... I'm just like you got punched in the face. You know what I mean? You got a little blood in your mouth. Yeah. I mean, from that metallic note. Okay. But in a good way. Um, spice. Richness. Um, and that cast kind of comes in the end with that milk chocolate note. What are you picking up? Yeah. I'm definitely getting like a... Almost like I bit into a... Like the... the kind of that juicy like part of a flower or something where like there's a... You pull the thing out, there's like a little piece there. And like a kid, you might have like tasted it. So yeah, it's sort of a grassy... Sweet note, mm-hmm. definitely some sawdust in here. <clears throat> definitely a lot of citrus. Mm-hmm. Not quite pine saw, but I mean, it's you're reaching those levels of intensity. Good level of spiciness, earthiness, richness. It is a challenging and very complex whiskey, guys. It is. There's a ton going on here. The sherry is definitely here, uh, more pronounced on the palate for sure. I can't say that I got a really strong chocolate note. There may have been some. Chocolate elements here. Really? I didn't None get of the sides, really? Where did you first swallow? I got a little bit up front on the pilot where I was thinking that could be chocolate. Mm-mm. It could be something else. Now, when I swallowed, I got just lots of... I got that combination of oak. And again, I was just so focused on that grassy element. That's mm-hmm. the, what I was focusing on. Maybe that kind of drew me in more. You know, there was like a flaxseed sunflower kind of note to it. When you said that, I was like... You know what? I, there was something I, I kind of wanted to touch on when you said like kind of you've been in the flower type mm-hmm. thing. Um, yeah, I mean you're right. This is a challenging one. This is one I think if I come back to it, if I, I think if I spent multiple, if we spent all night yeah. sipping on two or three drams of this. Yeah, we'd be able to write down thirty things. Oh, we'd be going on for an hour and a half. This would be a mm-hmm. ridiculous review. All right. So with water, vanilla and oak come up quite a bit more. It's getting sweeter. Candied vanilla. The candy note is really more prominent with a few drops of water. It's really a sweet, yeah. sweet smell. Lemon, like um, custard, yeah. custard, yeah, yeah, something like that. It's like a lemon dessert kind of thing. Ah, a lemon ring pie almost. Yeah, 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 absolutely. We have a German place here in Columbus locally, and they do like three different kind of pies. They do like banana cream uh, or lemon. Uh, I can't remember chocolate, mm-hmm. you know, cream pies or whatever. Yeah, yeah. And it smells just like that lemon, the lemon cream pie. Yeah, the sulfur's really died down. The smoke note we were talking mm-hmm. about is kind of, it's mostly gone. I mean, again, Well, the smoke note from the, the sulfur or, the, or, the, or the, the worm tube has gone down. I still think the oak from the cask is still very much there. There's still oak. I, I don't, it, is, it comes off as oak and not smoke to me now, though. You're right. Yeah, okay. I, you did say smoke. That, yeah, I, you, smoke right has come that. down. That, yeah, the oak is still it's very, very oaky. Yeah, vanilla oak, too. That, that's it distinctly And vanilla. incredibly pleasant. I really like the oak notes on this one. In fact, that's probably mm-hmm. one of the best things on the nose is that beautiful oak. It's... Well, that, I mean, that candy sweetness, too. I mean, that's that's another just pillar of this whiskey. Oh, not there. The smoke's coming back out for me. I mean, it, it's a big ABV. 52.2, while not, you know, not a massive ABV, at 24 years, that's significant. It's it's definitely doing its job. It, it feels more substantial than 52. Like, it feels And, and now heavy. I am getting more like a, 
that marshmallow note's becoming a little bit more of a light, light hint of chocolate. I get so much graham cracker. <laughs> Every time you say that, I think like, oh, I don't get that, but I get Well, as soon as you say graham cracker, I go back, I'm like, yeah, that is graham cracker. Jeez. Too. Jeez. And again, this is one of those whiskeys, we've talked about this before, Mike. Every time you go in for a new nosing, you move the whiskey around a little Man. bit, it changes. It does not stay consistent, and that's a great thing about this. Agreed. You said it was challenging, and it is, but it's also rewarding. Yeah. The more time you spend with this. I mean, mm-hmm. this isn't a beginner's whiskey. No, no, no. I mean, again, if you... If you brought this to somebody, you're like, hey, let me, let me show you a really cool whiskey, and they're just getting started, they just wouldn't know what to think. They'd just yeah. be confused. Mm-hmm. And really, all Craig Allocates are like that. Maybe. Well, I don't know if they'd be confused. They'd, they they would maybe get the top notes, and they'd miss all the layers. I think there'd be just like a overwhelming like punch to this thing that they can't uncoil, and they'd just be like, I don't think I like that, because they you kind of have to uncoil this one. Dude, it's like tiramisu. There's just layers to this. Just layers and layers. Candied layers, sweet layers. Sugary layers, oaky layers, vanilla layers. That's so good. Yeah, man. This is... I mean, like they all have been. I mean, mm-hmm. I, you know, I don't know. Have we had a disappointing Greg Allen? I, I've never tried the 13. I've had it, but it's been a while. Um, so what have we done? The 23, some exceptional we've, we've done three exceptionals. I've had the 13. I've had a... We both had that uh, store pick from Party Source. That was... That uh, was good, too. 17-ish years. Yeah, 17-ish years. I haven't had the standard 17. I'd like to get my hands on the 31, but that one's really pricey. You know, these are really pricey when you buy them in the UK, too. It's one of the rare whiskeys where I can get them for much cheaper in the States. Yeah, that's always nice for us. Get a little it's rare. It's used, I mean, nine times out of ten, we're paying whatever you guys are paying, plus 20%, plus shipping... Yeah, because I knocked out a couple of those 23-year-olds, the standard bottle. Oh, yeah. Those for like are, oh, two. I forgot 30. about that one. That's a great whiskey. Mm-hmm. Great that whiskey. one really holds up well with these exceptional casts. It really does. It does. It just doesn't have quite as much cask influence from these sherry butts. It's, it's, it's a little more bourbon forward. It's 46%. It's not cast strength. Mm-hmm. You know, it's, just, it's not yeah. exceptional cask. It's a very good cast. Yeah, water hasn't... It's changed it, but I mean, I can't really distinctly note what's changed yeah, here. Yeah, I mean, it, I think it became a little more candied. I think the the sulfury note took a step back. That's about it. From from a nosing perspective, it's probably more pleasant with water. There's chocolate. Okay. Good. Found it. Yeah, it almost comes in with like a berry note with it too. And um, then the finish is like, oh, it's just like a, it's some kind of sweetness that's got like. Hints of chocolate, but hints of like again marshmallow and cream and with oak really intertwined. It's cocoa. Not necessarily chocolate, it's like a cocoa powder. Remember like you you make the with a rabbit on it? The hot chocolate like the hot chocolate cocoa powder, like where you like pour it in with the hot water. Yeah, like almost like a cheap yeah. like cheap powdered chocolate, cheap cocoa. Yeah, there's there's it, there's hints of that and there's something else. Maybe it's the marshmallows from the from the hot chocolate, maybe. And then it's like intertwined with oak. Yeah. Mm. This is, I mean, this, you're right. It, you know what? Hot chocolate with marshmallows is almost a good way to describe this. Yeah. And then again, the, the citrus notes are there, which, you know, obviously seems out of place, but it works beautifully here. Yeah. That also the took a step back here. with water. The citrus it's, notes. Well, they, yeah. I'm not getting like the vegetal, um, like I'm chewing on some kind of leafy thing. It's not there. Mm. Man. God, it's a good whiskey. I, I'm, I keep wanting to go back in because it's just, this is so cool. And again, I've had a good bit of this and I'm still just... It's a whiskey that really rewards you for spending time with a glass, spending time with it. As I said. I wish I had two bottles. Rewarding whiskey. I wish I had two bottles. All right, so where are you as far as a whiskey score on this one? Because I'm kind of torn. I'm at least at a 90. The question is, I'm at a 91. Am I at a 91? I am. It's better than just a really good whiskey. This is a great whiskey. I'm actually, I'm, I'm going to go a little lower than you, Mike. I'm actually only at 89. And, uh... For me, I, I was hoping for more of the sherry cask to come in. I actually kind of enjoyed some of the sweet sulfur notes on some of those other ones. Exceptional cask doesn't mean overly cask driven. It just no. means exceptional. No, I, I agree. And this is an incredibly complicated and complex whiskey. It's very rewarding, but it's missing on kind of the notes that put me at the 90 level. But I mean, you could talk me into a 90 here. I mean, I, I'm not far from it. You could talk me down to a ninety, but that's 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 really actually, you're, you're going ninety one. Yeah, ninety one. Wow. Okay. I liked it that much. It's an incredible whiskey. Guys. I, I you know this is a distillery I I tend to gravitate to to be completely yeah. transparent. And with you know it. it's funny guys if you guys have kind of listened to Mike's reviews and scores, he likes clean peated whiskeys, but not Lechegg, for example. Correct. 
He's not a huge Deanston guy until we start talking like a third year. Yeah, I like that one. He likes Deanston in I general. Like that one. This is about as dirty and funky a whiskey as exists, and this is hitting Mike's palate. So this is a clean dirty. But yeah, I, mean, I think it's a really great whiskey. Uh, exceptional cask. Paid about three thirty for this one, Mike, which I think is the most I've paid for these, one of these exceptional casks. Sure. It's also the oldest of the exceptional casks. Barely. Not by a year, but still, I think I paid about three hundred for that one. Mm-hmm. So this mm-hmm. one came thirty dollars. No, I paid two ninety for. No, I paid two seventy five for that one, and then I had to get somebody to spend twenty five dollars with me to get free shipping. I tell you what, though, this one I had to pay shipping on. <laughs> um, I'd buy that for three thirty. Yeah, I, I'd, I'd buy it again. I might buy two. Yeah, no, I mean, well, if you're at ninety one, you'd, you'd be down for five hundred, I think. Close. Yeah, I'd pay four hundred for that. I mean, again. Less than 500 bottles. Yeah, man. 24 years old. Exceptional cast. Cast strength. Yeah. It's a great whiskey. Uh, this, once again, goes back to this, Mike. I'm buying every exceptional cast I see. And I should I should buy two. Mm-hmm. Even though I'm 89, I still think this is right. This was priced right. And great, this is such a challenging whiskey. I mean, I'm telling you. It's just such a challenging from that, whiskey. From that aspect alone. That's we, making we, me want to give it a 90. Is just how... Well, because how many times we talk about if it, tra- if it transitions, if it does yeah. this, it does that. It does all these things. It really does. I mean, it really does. I mean, and to be honest, I mean, not us. Be completely transparent. If it's challenging for us to really unravel all the pieces after two or three times having this thing, I mean, <laughs> it's complex whiskey. There's no other way to put. It. Yeah, the finish is probably where it's keeping it from a ninety for me. Up front, man, it's it's definitely a ninety. Mm. Anyway, whiskey. anyway, those are our thoughts. Amazing whiskey. Yeah, if you guys had a chance to try the, this one for the price and yeah. everything else, I think it's a must buy. Oh yeah, if you see these, and again. Even if you're not somebody who loves Craig Alex's profile, but you don't hate it, these these exceptional these, casters, ah, and they're, they're again they're so fun to spend time with. Mm. And try to just unwind them, take notes on. It's actually whiskey that like it's fun to geek out about. Yeah, I mean because this, this is a geek whiskey. Sure, this is no different than Balvenie single barrels or just mm-hmm. anything else where it's a single cast. This is what it is, man. There's yeah. four or five hundred bottles. What do you think? Yeah. Love it. Love it. Um, again, guys, just to give you the cast number one more time, it's cast number 5229, 24 years old. Um, was uh, filled in the barrel back in October 25th of 1995. Or excuse me, that's wrong. Yeah, no, October 25th, 1995. Yep, and guys, um, uh, we'll have all that detail down in the description below, so don't worry about that. Yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll be there we'll, for you guys. We'll give you all of that kind of yep. stuff. All right, so anyway, those are our thoughts on the whiskey. I'm a little bit higher on this than Dustin is. Um, rare, when is your bottle? Yeah. They would go that direction, but yeah, it I mean, there's a reason why we I buy my bottles and you buy yours, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. We, we, we think we're going to like this one better. <laughs> we both like this, this story pretty well. Yeah. Anyway, we want to thank you for joining for another Whiskey Review. Until next time, we wish the folks. Happy drinking. We'll see you then.